Alright, there we go. We've got four little packages. Pinch this. This side is a little thing. Okay, there we go. Before I look at those, um, I do have some non-anime stuff. So, um, I got <coughs> Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on DVD and Blu-ray. I've been curious about the movie. I'm willing to just watch it. The first one's good enough to, you know, feel like it's worth giving a shot. And then uh, Splatoon 3 for the Switch. Cool beans. You can see it's already been played. I'll talk about that later. Let's talk about this stuff here. First we have Aho Girl, which I've definitely been curious about. It's looked funny, but I'm not sure if it's also mean-spirited. So I've been curious. And I guess I have it on Blu-ray now. I should, I should probably check to see if it's on... Ooh. <clears throat> Is it really possible to be this stupid? I'm worried. Japanese with English subtitles only. Discotech. This seems a little bit... Maybe this was supposed to come out at the end of last month. And it just arrived a week late. The end of last month basically meaning that... <clears throat> It normally would have been with the August something order, but uh, I usually order that like September 5th, the day before the September 6th stuff, because the previous week's stuff showed up, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, let's um, get up to Boruto, The Vessel, DVD and Blu-ray, Borusian. <clears throat> with a red person on the back, but I just, you know? There's not two things here. I just never put this back in its sleeve. I wonder if y'all are screaming at me saying, you forgot to put it in its sleeve. Well, if you were, you're right. If you weren't, that's okay. I didn't notice and I'm friggin' holding these things, you know? Let's actually put the DD underneath so we can take a look at the X. <clears throat> Both. You know, I don't look here, but Viz is usually region A only. And presumably there's a dub. I think these are normal. I haven't seen this clo Black Clover one before. Looks like there's things going on in the background. Sorry. Before I continue, I was feeling that there was a thing here. I think it's a little piece of blue plastic. Yeah. Couldn't tell before. The DVD version should be pretty similar on the inside. Although, interestingly, the inside of the cover is different. So the Blu-ray is definitely a little more exciting. Next up we have... Welcome to Demon School, Ivor McCoon. This one seemed to actually be rated pretty well. And I know it's been on my... To Think About list on um, Crunchyroll. 
whole life is going to hell and it's the best thing that's ever happened to him. Interesting. This doesn't sound like it's about torturing the main character. That's 20 something episodes on three discs, region A, with an English dub. This is probably a part one. Yeah. Season one? Whoa. Okay. Well, let's put that in there. This in here. Definitely looks curious. <clears throat> well, I have to think about it. Magical Warfare. You know, kind of a neat name. Definitely an intriguing girl on the front. Hard to tell what to think about it. Let's see, that's an English dub. All 12 episodes, Region A. The pen may be mightier than the sword sometimes, but what if it's a magical sword? Really hard to tell. It's definitely curiosity, but it wouldn't be the first curiosity that I've raised an eyebrow and said that looks interesting, but not actually watched. They got Remain as our last Blu-ray. This one's regions A and B. Uh, there's an English dub there. Keep your head up. Okay. Water polo? It was saying something about a car accident. Water polo, sorry. Looks good. Obviously, you know, I haven't been watching a whole lot of sports anime. Curiosity, though. <clears throat> disc one. Disc two. Interesting. All right. Well, here's this week's anime DVD collection update. All right. Let's try to run through things. Uh, Classroom of the Elite, Season 2, Episode 8. Um, trying to remember what actually happened. It wasn't bad. I don't remember it being bad. More good um, Classroom of the Elite stuff. Nothing to really comment about. Harem in the Labyrinth of Another World. So, last week I was right. I didn't update my notes. I had watched Season... Or, Episode 9 and today... Well, this week I watched Episode 10. And I think this is a good example of why it's not scoring so well. Because, like I said, there's still this element of it where I think somebody can really enjoy it if, you know, it was branding itself differently. Like, if it was how I retired in another world, etc., etc., it would be kind of nice. But, like I said, the, la the end of episode 9 kind of started hitting at, oh, that part of this show that's actually important, the harem part. I'm, I say it actually important, but I, I mean, like, the thing that's been missing from it, it's pretty clear that it's... You know, not there. So, the dungeon stuff is okay. It's nothing too elaborate or extravagant, especially not for ten episodes into a series. But, while the main character was talking about the sort of stuff that should lead to the eventual creation of, you know, this more harem, episode ten was really about him not thinking too much about that one thing, and then going in there and doing some more stuff, and then they're very explicitly starting to say more of it. But, that pretty much means it sort of treaded grounds a little bit. And that's the real problem with it. It <coughs> doesn't move like it should, given the kind of anime that it is pretending it wants to be. But it's some other weird combination, which I think just makes it where it's disappointed by the people it does attract, and doesn't attract the kind of people that would actually be interested in it. And even for the people that would be interested in that sort of stuff, again, they may find it's 
lethargic pacing to be not so exciting. It works okay from a week-to-week -week basis as a thing that's just like, oh, yeah, I don't have to care about this one too much, I guess. But at the same time, I'm... Um, I think I think I watch it not expecting it to really do anything, and it doesn't do anything. So maybe maybe that's still not good. Black Summoner, same thing. I accidentally forgot to update my notes. I had watched episode nine last week. I've watched episode ten this week. Um, you know, again, it's kind of okay. It's still kind of rap rapidly moving forward to nowhere. It's kind of neat what it's doing, but at the same time, a little bit pointless. Although, I think it's rating better than Harem, and that's probably because it's at least targeting its core audience um, with the sorts of stuff they would like. And I don't think it's doing it too badly. The real problem is, similar to Harem, it's a little directionless, but I think it just stays engaging by throwing enough stuff, new stuff at you just to keep you thinking and wondering. <clears throat> Parallel, Parallel World Pharmacy, Episode 8. Um... I guess just more developments in it. It's a nice series, and it is dealing with some of the problems that it would deal with, that some of the niceties would have in there. So, for example, you know, like, if you were to introduce the automobile to a society that still uses horses, then what's going to happen to all the people who raise horses, take care of horses, house horses? You know, the horse infrastructure suffers when the auto industry takes over. And that's the way progress sometimes is, but this one's definitely a rapid source of progress from a single identifiable source sort of thing, and so the anime is dealing with that kind of okay. It, I'm not sure that it feels like it has a whole lot of conflict going on in it per se. And there's some elements of it that make sense for people to not know, but other things that don't make sense for them to know and understand. So, <clears throat> if there's a weakness to the show that I'm seeing here, it's nothing too devastating, I think, but there is this mindset where sometimes we take our own stuff for granted to such a degree that we think that it would be obvious that anybody that experiences our stuff that's never experienced it before would like it. And, you know, you normally see this in this show where it's just like, oh yeah, no matter what world they come from, everybody loves Japanese cooking. I would imagine some of them won't. But, you know, you put that kind of aside and okay, fine. And in this case, though, it's how would somebody who spent their entire life as a pharmacist in that world's level of understanding actually react to our main character like this? And they chose a character that says some of the things that are, yeah, they probably know some of this stuff, but other things that are just like, those are really weird claims to make. So, for example, if you go back in history for ourselves, you know, you go to back to plague doctors who are treating plagues by wearing masks, masks full of scents, believing it's bad smells that cause people to be sick. Well, <clears throat> if you introduced something else they wouldn't necessarily kind of understand that. They're not wearing those masks because they are fraudulently tricking people into thinking that's the way things work and, you know, saying, oh, yeah, well, we also know that it doesn't always work. And I think the show kind of undermines not only how much people do know, but also how much people react to things they don't know. So, uh, for example, the... Um, fake sugar pill stuff. I forget what that's called. It starts with a P. Um, the idea is, you know, with a lot of our modern science stuff, we test a medicine's effectiveness by comparing it to those fake pills that don't actually do anything. Because the idea is we know that people actually react pretty strongly to being given something, even if that something doesn't work. Kind of, maybe their mental state balances it. I'm not sure that we have an entire understanding of the process because it's also my understanding that the effect was weakening or was strengthening. It was changing, which kind of suggests that as the population became more aware of it, maybe that was affecting things or maybe something like that. I don't know. The entire point is 
you wouldn't have a profession of people that say, oh yeah, well, we're, just all, we're all a bunch of frauds. And these people are almost exactly saying that. Even though there's evidence of people, plenty of people in there who know they're not frauds, and at the same time, they wouldn't say, oh yeah, it's just random whether or not it works, because in the real world, even folk treatments isn't random. It does slightly work better than not working because of this um, phenomenon where people heal better when they believe they're being healed. And it's not perfect. And, you know, these people probably know situations where it's not perfect, and so the show would benefit more if it was showing a situation where they would know that. But it doesn't because it kind of takes for granted how good it is. And it's just an interesting thought. Overall, I don't think it necessarily makes it worse or unwatchable, but it is thought-provoking. Next up, Uncle from Another World, Episode 6. Um... Yeah, so it's dealing with that stuff, and I guess part of the reason Uncle from Another World works is it is kind of laid back in what it's doing insofar as, you know, we still only have three main characters interacting in the show, but they are still kind of exploring Uncle's time in the other world, and it's still entertaining what it does here and there and all that stuff, you know. We're kind of watching an isekai through an isekai sort of thing. But, um... Was there anything else about this episode? I don't remember. Amusing stuff. And then I, um... Started watching The Rising of the Shield Hero Season 2. You know, it's been sitting there. I haven't been continuing. I watched Episode 7 and 8. And it's okay, but I think I'm starting to pick up on what I don't like about Season 2. So, um, season one definitely introduces this idea of things being out of the control of our main character, and he has to adapt and overcome to certain degrees, and it's nice to watch, and you get cathartic release as he's justified for his hardships. And season two seems to understand that it's kind of hard to continue doing that from where season one stopped, and that's why it shakes things up. But I think some of the problem is the rules for why things weren't working so well in Season 1 were pretty well-defined, established, and well understood. Season 2, I think the problem, and the reason why I'm having trouble attaching to it, other than the fact that it feels like there's something different with the interactions, probably because there's a large tonal shift that happens between Season 1 and 2, just because of the progress made in Season 1. And maybe that's natural, it's really hard to tell. But the other part of it is, these rules don't make sense. They seem to be imposing hardships on our main character, but I don't feel like they're following their own understanding of the world. It is not making sense, and it's feeling a little arbitrary, and thus a little cheated, and thus not, not as good. I, I might need to watch more to find out. But, you know, the problem is, you know, fucking Splatoon 3. <clears throat> which I didn't play it the whole time. I was on PTO this past week. But there was other things. It was Dead by Daylight and it was Monster Hunter. You know, with Dead by Daylight, I'm needing to make sure I finish the current rift before it closes just so that I get my money's worth. Right now, I just need, like, literally one more rift fragment. Oh, that poor doctor. The match was, like, 25 minutes, and I spent 15 minutes of it running from him, and he had so much trouble catching me. But it was worth it in the end. Uh, unfortunately, while the Meg wasn't able to finish the generators like I was hoping, she was able to finally get healed, me on death hook, her not insane, and so I um, started curing my madness in a weird place, as if I had outrun the doctor, but I knew I didn't actually. He would find me and hook me, finally kill me, and the Meg would have chance at hatch. She found it. <sighs> but yeah, it was Leary's. That can be a really tough one for Killer. If you can't get inside the head of that survivor and find out how to cut them off, then that map can just be hell. And that poor doctor, he ran so much of it. I mean, 15 out of 25 may not seem like you know all of it, but that's because the Nia was also running him for a very long time, too. It's crazy stuff, man. But... I'm at the point where 
I'm putting blood points into Ada Wong once I get her to prestige three. I've reached my goal there as well, so I also want to play to accumulate blood points to finish prestiging her so that when the next chapter comes out, whenever it comes out, um, you know, I've had some time to put some blood points into some other characters and then accumulate stuff. Hopefully there's time. So, all of that, um, Splatoon 3, I'm, I haven't been playing a whole lot, lot. I've been mostly doing single player in free time where I can, I think. <clears throat> so I, I haven't completely cleared every single kettle in every single site in the first four sites. If you don't know what I mean when I say that, it's fine. When you play it, you'll eventually understand what I mean. Because um, it, it's a little confusing how it's numbering things initially, but then you'll start understanding. And it's nice. It's a mix. The single player story is a mix between um, a standard Splatoon story and uh, the Octo expansion. <clears throat> but it feels like the areas where you go to the kettles, uh, the, the, it feels like there's a little bit more to explore than usual. And it's kind of nice and refreshing. So, um, some of the challenges are absurd, like some of the Octo expansion ones, but I think far fewer of them, and they're more optional. Because I think the goal here is to give people more flexibility and freedom to choose how to do stuff. So, I've been going through and doing kettles and ones that out offered alternative versions of weapons. I've been trying to go through all the weapons. So far, I've skipped two challenges. One of them was because the um, you're supposed to shoot targets with a sniper rifle and while I'm okay with aiming and doing that the main problem I keep running into is running out of ink so I can't manage my ink while doing it at the same time and that's frustrating me so you know not, maybe not even put that on the back burner. I'll have to make a decision based on once I get far enough where that's all that's left in the single player and I decide is it worth it or not? Do you, do I get something for doing that that I would probably want to get? The answer is probably yes. <clears throat> but I'll figure that out later. Um, the other one is one where you're shooting, again, with a sniper rifle. Uh, and my main problem with that one is just that the sniper rifle they give you is weak and the range is not as far as I would prefer it to be. So, it... <sighs> It, it keeps not hitting the way I want it to hit. I don't think it's the kind of sniper rifle I would enjoy using in the game. Uh, for Turf War stuff, um, I, I think I'm not very high. Maybe level 8 at the highest. Um, <clears throat> I started out with all the amiibo gear, except for the Pearl and the Marina ones. And there's some juggling I've done with that that's prevented me from completely doing that because I didn't realize... They could give you stuff. It looked like they didn't, but what I needed to do is probably register them with Splatoon 2. And then when they were registered for that Splatoon, then I could um, just use them on my Splatoon 3 and get all the items, like I did all the previous stuff. But I didn't do that pre-work. Oh, well. I think I have an idea of how I might try to do it if I were to try to do it. But I don't want to do it while I'm in the middle. I'm, I need to do this thing where I get some items, play some Turf War, get some items, play some Turf War, and eventually just get all the items from those Amiibos. Uh, as for how I'm doing while playing, fine. I know, I know some, some of the matches I've been overwhelming. Some of them have been pretty balanced. A couple of the early ones were definitely not in my favor. But... I had some good amiibo gear to give me the skills I wanted, which is mostly ink conservation. Like, recharge it faster and use it slower. Good stuff. Not enough to, like, break it. But enough to probably make it nicer, I'm guessing. Um, <clears throat> so I'm doing that. And doing fine. I don't know. Maybe I should send y'all um, one of my battle recordings from when I did pretty well. I think you can look at that and see, you know, that sort of stuff. You can't really say, oh yeah, Giga Frost is really good at that, because a whole lot of that is also who you get matched up against. I think one of the things about Splatoon 2 that frustrated me a lot is most of the names were Japanese names when I was playing, and that makes me think that maybe my um, MMR or something 
was putting me there, and I always felt like the servers had lag that were in favor of the people I was against, which would in theory mean if it's a dedicated server from Nintendo, what if it's some dedicated server in Japan? Because it's matching me up with mostly Japanese people, so it's putting stuff that's mostly good for them. That's what it felt like. I don't think that's necessarily what it actually was. But at the same time, uh, you never know. Maybe the vast majority of people playing were Japanese, at least at that time. Right now, I don't know. But um, the people I have played with, fine. You know, did some uh, salmon run. It's fun to do again. Splatoon is just fun. Splatoon 3 is more Splatoon. I don't know that there's much more to say other than if you haven't gotten Splatoon before, you can get this. If you've not gotten it before, play through some of the single player. It teaches you about a whole lot of the stuff. It gives you a lot of opportunity to play with a lot of items, specials, things like that. Let's see if there's anything else to talk about. Um, once again, my Twitch friend is watching uh, Stranger Things Season 4. And I, th I think the way we divided it up is actually really good. So, Season 4 Episodes 1 through 4 are good chopping block. Uh, then uh, 5 through 7. 7 is where Part 1 ended before. But that's a pretty natural one, too. There, It introduces certain things in Episode 5 that are things that are built up upon. So if you ended at Episode 4 and you resume from Episode 5, it actually works out pretty well. Not bad. Alright. And then, of course, next week will be um, Season 4, Episodes 8 and 9. And I'm sure my Twitch friend is watching this, but... <sighs> Exciting. Alright. Is there anything else? can't think of anything else to really mention. Y'all, have a nice week.